In this short video, I'm briefly going to describe the authentication in Moodle 2.0 versus the authentication in Moodle 1.9. To access both of these, we have to be logged in as our administrative user account or have an account with administrative access. The screen we have up right now is 2.0. It's the test version of Moodle. And the, this screen is looking at Moodle 1.9. Now for those used to Moodle 1.9, to get to the authentication, you go to Users off the Site Administration menu, you go to Authentication, and you go to Manage Authentication. Once you go to Manage Authentication, you have a list of eyeballs that are either open or closed along with the authentication methods. So at this screen, the Manual Accounts and No Login are the only two choices available. If you want to adjust those choices, you click Settings, and then you find out which user fields are locked and unlocked. Once you're done making any adjustments, click Save Changes. No login is the same thing. Now, for example, if you have an LDAP server, you can click the eyeball that opens the LDAP server, and then you have to go into LDAP server and you have to give the host URL, you have to tell what version of LDAP you're on and the encoding. Then you can go ahead and you can say which attributes and what the user rights are, what expiration dates rights are, and what user creations are allowed to do. There's also data mapping that allows you to map very specific fields to different fields on the LDAP server. The LDAP server is great for organizations that have multiple logins. Um, for example, a college that the student logs into one main server and then from there they can access multiple subsystems. Additional forms of um, authentication exist in the terms of POP3 server, so you could use an email server, IMAP server, again email based, you're able to do Google authentication, where the users authenticate against their Google account. You can do email-based, self-based registration as well, where the users just fill out a form, they get an email back to them, and then um, they're granted access. Now, it's important with the authentication to really consider carefully what your goals are. If you're running an open system, that, for example, you want anybody to be able to come in and take a training course. You probably want to use email based on self-registration. If you're running a college environment where you want to have some very specific controls over who comes in and who doesn't based on registration, you may want to use an external database. You may want to use an IMAP server or an LDAP server. There's also additional authentication available through conduit based um, authentication. Conduit basically means that there is a you might have a registration system that it's going to feed the information to. And again, it's going to be asking for um, a plug-in information, password information, and what's available. On this server, we're right now using manual counts or we can say no login for a user. Now, switching to the Moodle 2.0, the reg the registration and the authentication has moved a little bit. It's no longer under user manage authentication, they've moved it to the plugin. So again, from your administrative login, you want to click on site administration, you want to click on plugins, and you want to click on authentication. Once you're there, you can click on manage authentication, and the same screen comes up. It's very similar. There are a few changes in appearance. Email-based self-registration is still there. Um, you can now authenticate still against the IMAP server, which is email-based. You can authenticate it against an LDAP server. You can authenticate it against an NNTP server, which really isn't used that often anymore. You can authenticate against a POP3 server, so email authentication. And you also have now um, some web service authentication as well that allows you to use different web services to authenticate. The LDAP server has a little bit changed. 
um, you're now able to specifically say what fields. You're allowed to use some filters to allow different server access and data mapping has changed a little bit as well. So again, with 2.0, it's still the same authentication. You just have to, again, be aware of what the authentication allows you to do. It is the key to coming into the system. Now, authentication can also be user-based. If you go into the user list, let, let me get back to that point. If we go back to the user list through our site management, we are also able to get to deal with some authentication. So if I click on users, if I click on accounts, I'm going to browse a list of the users. I'm going to click with my username and then come over to um, edit profile. I can actually select on a user by user basis different authentication methods. Okay. So there is a wide number of varieties in order to do authentication. LDAP, IMAP, regular database where the site is its own administrative, in other words, manual. Then you can use email-based self-registration. Be careful with the email-based self-registration. It's a great way to get spammers and people who don't belong in a website into the website. Thank you.